Hi everyone and welcome um, to the next session on this breaker track. I'm happy to be joined here by Timo Pagel and Stefan Fleckenstein um, who are going to talk about their OWASP project today called Project Defect Dojo. Um, so they're going to tell you all about the project which is an open source vulnerability management tool that streamlines testing. So good stuff. Um, so I'm JP, I'll be your moderator for today's session. Um, we're going to have roughly 20 minutes of talk and 10 minutes of Q&A. So make sure you use the Q&A function in the Hoover app. Um, to ask all your questions to the guys um, and yeah we'll answer them towards the end so guys take it away i'm looking forward to hearing about this thank you jenna you should see my screen now correct so we can see you guys and the screen right not the screen yet i can see your screen Oh, well, as long as Stefan can, then yeah, we should be good to go. All right. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Stefan and I uh, would like to present over Defect Dojo today. Um, first of all, who we are, then I give you a, a, an overview of the agenda. Uh, I'm Timo Parger. Uh, I'm a cloud security freelancer. Uh, I'm living in Hamburg in Germany, and I love open source projects. That's why. I present uh, over Defect Dojo today, how I use it in my work. Stefan. Yeah, I'm Stefan, Stefan Fleckenstein. I'm head of cybersecurity at the comp company My One Wolf in Germany. And in my spare time, I'm one of the moderators of the Defect Dojo project, which I joined like one and a half years before. So purely a hobby for me, but a hobby that has something to do with my day job as well. So here is the uh, agenda for you. We will give you an introduction of what is a vulnerability management system. I will tell you my use cases. So why do I use Defect Dojo? What are the tools I'm using uh, to feed findings in Defect Dojo? Um, then we will explain some, some features which are very important uh, from, from, from our point of view. And then we will uh, have a demo because this is a showcase, right? So uh, we try to have most of the time as a demonstration of the tool itself. So why vulnerability management system? Uh, as we heard in the talk before, for example, there are Kubernetes uh, security scanners or Docker security scanners. And you also have an application, for example, which you want to scan uh, on, on different levels, for example, for known vulnerabilities uh, or for vulnerabilities which you introduce in your code. And all these different scanners produce findings. And in case you, you already plan to have multiple tools you would like to use it would be good to have one system to consolidate all the findings that's why you need a vulnerability management system and defect dojo is from my point of view a very advanced one you can see here uh, on the on on the documentation page that there are a lot of tools already integrated you see i can scroll like of endless so you don't have a lot of work to import these uh, different uh, findings from the tools. Defect Dojo, I have to say, is kind of a bit dumb. It's not generating these findings. It's just managing the findings. That is something sometimes is misunderstood. So Defect Dojo is there to help you to manage the finding. That's why it's a vulnerability management system. It's not a scanning tool. So how is uh, Defect Dojo looking? Defect Dojo uh, has a, a, a structure. You have a product type where you can define, for example, that uh, you have very important applications and not so critical applications. Or you say you have internet facing applications and non-internet facing applications, or you divide it by stack, front end and back end applications. That depends on how you would like to use it. Then you have products. A product uh, is a product which gets tested. Uh, how often it cross, cross, is corresponding to a GitHub uh, repository, so one application. Uh, then you have the manager, the, the engagement. So one product can have multiple engagements. Uh, I use these engagements uh, to refer to the different tests. Then you have uh, the test itself under it, uh, kind of right now I do a test and in five minutes I do a test and so 
and so on. Each test can have multiple findings and depending on how you scan, you have endpoints or not. So when you use a dynamic obligation security scanner like Overstep, you will have endpoints um, in case you use a uh, known vulnerability scanning tool, a software composition anal analysis tool, then you will not have endpoints. So when you use Defect Dojo like I do it in, a, in, in, in an automated way, um, a very important feature is a deduplication because you scan, you scan yesterday, then a uh, developer analyzed the finding and maybe the developer figured out this is a false positive or there is no patch available. That's why I want to accept it for now. And in case a developer made these decisions, it's important that um, the notification is not there on the next day again. So that's when, when uh, the deduplication comes into picture. Let us start with the top picture, with the picture on the top. You see the product, which has the engagement, which has a test. And then you see here, there is a finding A. This is the original finding and the finding B. Then you, on the next day, or after a minute, you perform another test. And then Defect Dojo identifies, I had this finding in the test before, so I create a, re uh, a reference. That is a, a deduplication. It deduplicates the findings, says, hey, I saw this one here beforehand. Then there's another finding which wasn't there beforehand, then this is a new active finding. And uh, now we come to, to a more specific feature, which is deduplication on product level. That means that Defect Dojo will look our, for the, um, if, if the finding is somewhere in that product already, that you can see here on the right, you have another engagement, uh, then a test, and then a finding. And when you do it on product, uh, when you do it on engagement level, you see it on the bottom here, um, where you have the, the, the division line here. So it, Defect Dojo only looks in the same engagement and not in other engagement for that finding. Um, I use different uh, tools. I use Secure Codebox and uh, the Cluster Image Scanner. Both are actually tools with orchestrate other scanning tools so that I can feed the results to Defect Dojo. Um, I very briefly explain these tools. Um, so this is Secure Codebox. Uh, where you, um, which you deploy in a Kubernetes cluster. And in the Kubernetes cluster, when you deploy a new service, uh, the auto discovery recognize, hey, there is a new service deployed. So I create a scan for it, an OverZap uh, uh, instance for it. Then the OverZap uh, instance will be configured and started to go against the Kubernetes a uh, service which has been deployed, you will identify findings and these are getting uploaded to Defect Dojo and findings which are not handled are getting, um, are, 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 are um, handled by sending out notifications, for example, via Slack or Rocket Chat. The cluster image scanner uh, works a bit uh, different. Uh, it's also uh, deployed in a cluster. Uh, in each cluster you have, then you have a collector which identifies which images are running in that uh, cluster. Then uh, that is pushed to a GitHub repository, a Git repository, and then the orchestrator picks it up and runs multiple scans. For example, the dependency check uh, to identify known vulnerabilities and also other self-made checks. And then um, they are getting uploaded to Defect Dojo. Defect Dojo identifies these are the handle with the the findings which got handled already, and these are the findings which are unhandled, and the unhandling, unhandled findings are getting uh, sent to the to the developers or operations people. Defect Dojo has a lot of enterprise features. For example, the API, um, which is very powerful, uh, where you can connect against and get all the information out to create your own statistics. For example. Then you have an Azure ID authentication. You have the ability to perform authorization um, on product level. Uh, so you can do it very fine, granularly. Um, then you are able to import Azure ID groups uh, so that you can make use of that uh, very uh, uh, fine, granular authorization system. And you can easily deploy 
uh, defect to, to, for example, with Helm. This uh, is the OPA, open API definition. Um, so it's, it's uh, done with Swagger. And here you see that you can browse through all the different uh, possible endpoints you have, for example, or the engagements. Uh, and you have a key where you can regenerate the key whenever you feel like. Uh, through the API, I personally use it to generate response statistics per team. So it's important to know are the teams reacting in the uh, in the way I want to. For example, the policy might state that critical findings um, um, needs to be uh, tackled within a day or two. So you can generate statistics and see if that matches or not, and then maybe uh, uh, adjust the policy. Um, or help the teams to, 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 to actually uh, comply to the policy. Or uh, what I also do is uh, uh, the generation of container image lifetime statistics out of Defect Dojo because I have these information in Defect Dojo per team. Yes, now I would like to hand over to Stefan. Yeah, I will just share my screen. that you see how Dojo, Defect Dojo actually looks like. You should now see my screen with a Defect Dojo dashboard. Yes. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, so Timo showed us how data can come into secure um, into Defect Dojo, but now let's have a look what we can do with the data here. So when we started, we see the dashboard, we have some high level metrics here on the top, how many engagements we have, how many finding came in the last seven days, how many have been closed, accepted stuff like this. And on the left, we have the main menu. So we can work in two ways, basically, with Defect Dojo. We can look at single products. We say we have one product and we want to know about this, how the security status, how much vulnerabilities we have. Or we have the possibility to work on a more holistic view that we see all the findings that we have in the system. This might be if you are the CISO of a company, you don't care for single projects, but you want to have an overall look at things. You might use more of these things. As a product owner, you might look at certain products and then you can have list the products and let's have a look, for example, at the juice shop, the OWASP juice shop that has been checked with um, OWASP SAP and some other tools. So step with um, how Timo showed us before with um, secure code box that is running in the background on the live um, environment and pushes data into Defect Dojo. Um, so when you come in here, we see some high level metrics for this product now we see we have um, total 60 findings, six of them are critical um, and some more data. What else do we have? We have components. If we use software um, composition analysis like dependency check, yarn audit, um, other tools, it records the components that are in there that only the vulnerable components not it's not a asset management tool or stuff like this but all the components that have um, vulnerabilities in their findings next we see metrics so that we have an overview we see the 60 findings here um, with an outbreak of the severity and what we see here is the different statuses. We have open findings. We might, we, none of them are verified at the moment. None of them are risk affected. No false positives, no out of scopes. There we see we have a status model that is really important when we assess findings. Um, that we do things only once. So with the deduplication algorithm that uh, Timo showed us before. If a finding comes in, I assess it, say, oh, this is an open, uh, this is false positive, for example, or I do other things that I will show you in a second. Then we see it here and it stays like this. If you do another import the next day, the original decision will still be there. It will not be reopened again. We see the engagement, um, like different kind of groups of tests. Like here, we have a manual audit. 
engagement where we do some manual things, use um, SEMGRAD and Beyond Audit, or we might have a pen test where we feed the data from or um, the automated tests like from a CI/CD environment, um, like the SAP scan um, that Timo showed us before. And we have three different possibilities basically to get data into um, Effect Dojo. It's push like secure code box um, that pushes data into um, Defect Dojo via the API of Defect Dojo. We can do things manually. We can lots of tools produce files, JSON files, XML files or stuff that we can import into Defect Dojo um, either manually via the user interface or via the API. Again, this is typically how it works in CI-CD environments where you have your scanners running in the night or with every commit, and then you import it man um, automatically, or you can do it via the interface manually. And there are some tools where Defect Dojo calls the API of the tool like Sonar Cube to get the data. So we have all kinds of integrations, yeah. Okay, then um, most important are the findings. And when I came into the project, I thought, why is it findings and not vulnerabilities? It's a vulnerability management tool. So where do I find the vulnerabilities? But when stuff comes in from the scanners, we don't know, are these really vulnerabilities or are these just things the scanner found? We have to assess it and we have to deal with it. And this is, I think, what Defect Ocho is basically for. So, and this we find in this um, status model. So we could here, for example, See, these are all our open findings. They are there. Scanners have reported them, and in the moment they are there, we see them here listed. And we can do different things with it now. So, first of all, we might have users who are not, or stakeholders who are not users of Defect Dojo, like maybe a product owner doesn't have access to the system or the management. So, we can have a report like a nice. Um, HTML report that we could print as a PDF and send it to someone, or if we want to do some other things outside with it, we have CSV or Excel exports of the whole list. Um, we can filter the list, can for example say we don't want to see everything, but only the SEP scan test, and then we apply the filter and we have a much smaller and um, more usable list. So then we can go into a vulnerability itself and see lots of data. So we have lots of data. It's a huge data model that's um, behind a vulnerability a finding, and it is populated by the scanner. So different scanners have different information, and you will find all the information we can gather <coughs> Sorry, here in the system. So here for the SEP scan, we have uh, title, severity, stuff like this. We have the description, mitigation. We know the connection to the endpoint here, for example. If we go in another finding, coming from your own audit, we see the component, for example. We see this description again. We have a vulnerability ID. We can quickly check on the CVE database to get some more information. Um, another example would be find it. something coming from Zemgrep, um, where we see the location in the file. So Zemgrep is a, a, a SAS tool, has found a vulnerability in a snippet, and we can, for example, then go directly to the um, GitHub project here and see the source code, and then start to assess it, what kind of um, vulnerability is it, should we care about it or not. And for, um, so we get a good look of all the information we get out of the scanner here. And then we can start to work on it as well. For example, let's take something of step again. And say, for example, we have an HTTP site here. So the step scanner has found this is 
not only or not available via HTTPS inside, but it's um, HTTP, which we don't want to have typically. But for example, here we could say, well, um, it's not ideal, but we want to do a risk acceptance for the moment. So we say we have to accept it. And because there's a, we make a recommendation as the security team, we say, well, it's not perfect. And can have some text data as an older client, which only can do HTTP. So we want to accept it for the moment. And then someone else could say, yes, we really accept it, but it expires like beginning of September. Then we want to reassess the whole thing and save it. And then we will see is now has the status in inactive and risk accepted. And if we go, for example, on the metrics page, we'll see we have one inactive with the stories expected finding. And so we can go through our findings, assess them. We can do it one by one, or we could use, say, um, I have several ones and say, okay, I have assessed these four, do a bulk edit, say, well, these are, let us say, out of scope for a reason um, and not active again, then they are out of the list. Now here we see 55 are still open and in the metrics we see um, we have four out of scope findings. And so we can assess all our vulnerabilities and then get a really good view all the time um, about the status of our systems or the status of our whole company, um, the security status, all of our vulnerabilities, and have the possibilities to report it, to get more metrics out of it, and really work with it. And with the API, have lots of other possibilities to integrate it with other systems. Um, so I think we said we have 20 to 25 minutes. I would be in between that right now. Um, Jenna, are there any questions? So no um, questions in the chat at present, but um, one for me, but how can we find out more about this project? Do you guys have a project page or anything like that? Yeah, of course we have. Um, Doubt you just Google Defect Dojo. And then you will find the GitHub link. So it's on GitHub um, Defect Dojo. There you find all the information, um, the source code, and links to the documentation as well. For example, um, there's really good documentation of the whole system, how you use it. Um, how you contribute to it and other things. And for example, the long list, where is it? Importing, for example, yeah, um, this was this. Supported reports, I think. Is it? Directly under importing. Oh, yeah. Um, so where you here see the long list of scanners here on the right that we actually support, and it's really long. and there sometimes are problems with the scanners because what we see is lot, all these scanners, lots of open source products or commercial products, and they change their data from time to time. Then there's a new version, 3.0, and now it's a different JSON and stuff. Might not always work, or there are new features. And but then write a bug report. Um, uh, you're muted. All right. Um, yeah, you can write a bug report on our issues page and it will be um, dealt with. Or if you're brave, you um, write the patch yourself. This is how I started one and a half years ago. Didn't do any Python or so and said, well, I need a scanner and I build it. I will learn Python now. And the team will help you in every way and the last thing maybe so every month we have a release so there's a lot of releases so every month currently it's 2.11 since yesterday and there's a release 
the first um, Tuesday of every month. So it's a very, very well maintained project. I do love your documentation, I have to say. <laughs> Kudos. Uh, so you do actually have a question that's just come in from Max. What is the best way to deploy and install Defect Dojo on an enterprise environment? For example, AWS, ECS and versus run it in an EC2 instance. Where can we find documentation about it? So I would recommend using Kubernetes, um, where we have a document. So we support um, Kubernetes, we support Docker Compose, and there's with Go Dojo uh, manual installation if you just have a machine somewhere running a Linux server. Um, but um, I would go for Kubernetes, and there's you find some documentation about it. Um, Somewhere. Um, I think it's from the docs you will find it installation. Maybe find it. How to do it on Kubernetes. So, this is what I'm running, for example, in my company. Awesome. I hope that answers your question, Max. Um, and another one here from Francois Eric. Is there an, an initiative to standardize tools output? Yes, there are. So there's the Sarif standard. So there's one standard Sarif that some tools use now um, to out for their output. And this helps us, for example, because then we don't have to write a parser for lots of scanners. Maybe in the future we will just support the Sarif output, which is for stuff like SAST tools, or I think SCA. I'm not sure how good it will work for um, dynamic tools, but the Sarif standard is there and what we see is um, the S-bombs bill of materials that can be enhanced with um, vulnerabilities that come as well. So as an input partially supported by Defect Dojo at the moment. I think they are supported. I haven't used them. Amazing. I think we have one more. We're struggling to get onto the QA. Ah, uh, here it is. Um, using a setup, for example, with defect dojo and secure code box, how can or should you prevent an application or container with critical vulnerabilities from being deployed to production via CI C D? Tricky question. Do you have an answer, Timo? Yeah, the question is if you really want to block, right? Um, yeah. That that would be the question. Do you want to block it? So when when you newly introduce a, a vulnerability, yes, uh, in in the code by by a developer, then you want to block. I understand that. The trouble is that you will slow down the pipeline when you block it because these dynamic tests are, uh, take some time depending on the environment which you want to scan. So it can be five minutes. Uh, I also saw shops where it took a day. That depends on the configuration, how many things you are running. But when it's taking too long, from my point of view, the best is to do it asynchronously. Uh, like I have shown uh, with the secure, secure code box, uh, you could go to defect to check when there is a new, uh, the new um, engagement with a new test. Uh, and then block it in case there is something new coming up. Uh, but I would, for, for, for secure code box, which is mainly dynamic application security testing, wouldn't block. When you have a static application security testing, then uh, that is pretty fast. There, I would recommend to block it uh, in case there is something unhandled, because uh, then the developer can directly react to it and uh, you will have a more clean environment. And the question was, I think, how to do that during the build pipeline? Uh, yeah, you go through the, to the API. I personally use a defect Dojo client, which I um, created, which is an image. Um, but you can you can uh, also use there are different uh, API wrappers you can use, and you choose one, and then you go to defect Dojo and ask for this test, which I just uh, for. Uh, uh, where the findings which I just uploaded, is there something unhandled? And in case there is something unhandled with a severity of high, for example, or critical in case that is there, you stop the build. Or you, you Amazing. stop Thank doing you the so much. 
guys definitely you had a flood of questions there and a few more that we couldn't actually get to so um if your question hasn't been answered today feel free to reach out to the guys on hoover um thank you so much for joining us timo stefan that was awesome good luck with the project and we hope you all have a great day ahead take care